Hello and welcome. This is a bit of a follow-up on a dropper item distribution. Uh, the original video, you know, honestly still doesn't have that many views, but I got one comment asking for a bit more of an explanation, and honestly for me that's enough to make the effort to make this video. So let's get on with it. So over here we have um, eight barrels set up. This is where we're going to distribute our items. We have hoppers feeding into them. And for convenience, I've got a little line over here to which I can just put a lever on and ensure no items come out of those barrels once I distributed them. So I can have a look at it and then unlock it to pull them into here. This is just to aid in testing. So how do we distribute items into these hoppers? Well, we'll start with a dropper line and I'm just going to bring some blocks over this way so I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that was just to place the items. Put a barrel at the end. These are our droppers that will distribute the items. Now we need to power these droppers. Now we can either power it into a solid block on the side or an empty block above it. Um, the reason why I prefer uh, powering to an empty block above it is um, it just gives me more room to put things side by side elsewhere, but it also makes it easier to take a comparator output of the first one. It doesn't have to be from the side, it can be from above. Um, in my other videos it's been from the side, but in this one we're going to go from above. So I'm just going to put some blocks here just so I can build off. So we'll do some observers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we need um, basically a way of powering these droppers. So we're going to do a redstone line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then, um, now this is where it gets interesting. But for this build, we're going to be a bit exact and I'll explain some of the variations later. But we're just going to take a signal into that line. So with that comparator there. And then in order to allow us to bring it down to eight, I'm going to put another comparator here with a barrel. And we're just going to put some um, items in here. It doesn't really matter what. Just so that when we've got a signal here, we want this one to read one. So I'm just going to have a look at it and it's one. So that's, you know, that many items filled in the chest. And the reason we do this is we want, um, when it does the lower signals, we want that to go from one to zero, that one to two to one to zero, three to one to zero. So the next thing is a little simple fader clock. Um, now in my example one, we're just gonna go like this. So if you built these fader circuits, you know that they just basically drop by one each time. So basically, um, if this is reading 15, then they'll read 15, read 15, read 14, and then the next cycle that'll read 14, 14, 14, 13, 13, 13, 12, and so on, drop by one every time it goes around, and it takes two ticks to drop around. Now, two ticks seems to, is about as fast as you can run droppers, so it basically means every two ticks will signal the observers again, and they'll change, pulsing the droppers. But because the signal's dropping, the length this redstone line powers for will be reduced by one each time that cycle goes around. So I'm just going to get a lever and give that a quick test. So it's on full. And then we let it go. We can hear it dropping. Now, what you heard there is it's dropping by two. So we had a slow clock. So this is not particularly unusual for dropper distribution and it comes over to this system over here. So you can have um, two lines of observers powered from the same signal source. So we have a fast clock over here, some observers here, some observers here. It powers into this line. The redstone on each side of this block should receive the same power at the same time because they both get it from the comparator. But what you'll see is when we power this, that one's pulsing slow, and that one's pulsing very, very fast. And this is because um, the order the observers are updated in impacts when they can take another signal. So it does cause a sort of a problem when you're trying to do drop item distributions. 
Um, so it's handy to know that um, you usually fix it by moving your redstone around. And sometimes you fix it by changing your fader clock. So this is a fader clock and it's a rather traditional one. As we can see it drops by one each time because this pulses into that. And because that's directly powered it'll power this redstone and so on and so forth. There is another way to do it with target blocks though. Um, normally you wouldn't bother with this. Um, in this case this powers this. The target block draws the signal in rather than the block here pushing the signal out. It's still a fader clock, it works exactly the same, it's just the target block allows us to change the orientation of these two comparators. And what we'll see over here is we're going to just do that. So I'll change this to a target block and we're just going to change the direction of these two comparators and we'll see that it changes. You can see it's a much faster signal. So if I watch down here, you can see that it's going down slowly like we want it to. So on, verify that this is still one because we might have to change things, but it is still one, so that's fine. And that's our fast signal drop. So we've got our adjustment and our fader clock, and now all we need to do is to get this to power the way we want it to. So I'm just referencing a build I made earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a repeater. We're just going to feed it into this block here. And we're going to do it on two ticks. And the reason for that is so that we can have an observer down here as a signal source. Now it needs to be two ticks because it takes two ticks for this to get around again. So if it's only one tick, you wouldn't get a signal repeating through here, which means you wouldn't get a fade has to be at least two but now we can find out if we put so I just need to face that observer the other way up into the block we can already see that we're getting just one pulse on that last one. Oh, sorry I made it a clock there different block one pulse on that last one Three pulses on the second last one. Three pulses on the third last one. A bit hard to count. But more or less, this is the basic of it. So every time that pulses, that will receive one pulse, two pulses, three pulses, four pulses, five pulses, six pulses. And because the redstone line comes in this direction, it's forcing the block update order so that that dropper, that dropper, that dropper will all fire in that order, but in the same redstone tick. So it's important that the redstone runs from this above from the observer that powers this dropper to the observer that powers that dropper in that order because we want each of these droppers to update in order within the redstone tick to move the item from here to here without the hoppers underneath them receiving an update. So the next step is to make it so that this turns on when we've got um, items in this dropper. So to do that we're just going to take a comparator and we'll take An invert of the signal so that this turns on when it's empty and off when it's not empty and then we'll get a sticky piston and we're just going to put it above this block so I should be able to just point there and put it there okay and we'll get our handy lever again we can test this again so we can simulate that comparator coming on we can see that when items are in, it'll trigger that to go. Now what we need to do is it to go around as long as there's items in there. So to do that, um, basically every time this signal drops to zero, we want to pulse that again. So the way we do that is we put, because that's a solid block, we can put a slab here. Put another slab here. Get our trusty target block and put that under this comparator. Put that back again. Then we can take some redstone, put it here and here, so that when this is powering this, it pushes that out. And if that comes down again, and it's still powered by this comparator, it will then repeat the cycle. So we can test that by simulating items in this comparator. So I'll turn that on. 
and then turn it off to be, sorry, turn it off and then turn it on as if items came in. We can see it cycling. And more importantly, we can see there's a slight pause at the end just to allow everything to reset. So that's quite nice. And that's the entire system. So we can put um, a whole bunch of items in here. And I'm just going to check that that's locked first. So I'll just put a bunch of slabs. And we can see they're being distributed. We'll just let that finish. And then we can see that there are eight items in each of these barrels. So just to recap, we need a way of adjusting the signal such that the length is one at the end of whatever chain we do. So if you want a longer one, obviously you'd subtract less. If you want a shorter one, you subtract more. We need a fader clock that fades once every two ticks by one signal so that that line creeps down every two ticks. We need a way of triggering that off with a two tick pulse. So that's our repeater and our observer. And then if we want this to happen automatically based on there being input, we need to have a way of taking a comparative input of the contents of that dropper and manipulating this observer so that it cycles based on whether there's still items in that dropper or not. Um, you can have different arrangements of this. So this is a sort of a from above arrangement. Um, my system around doing um, Potion brewing, um, that one was from the side, so I took two observers. It doesn't matter if you take two observers from the um, redstone line, it just matters that it points above the block. Um, but it's basically the same thing. You know, we have a sticky piston moving an observer into a two tick repeater, manipulating a fader clock with an adjustment of the signal as it comes around to a redstone line in front of observers, going above droppers sitting above hoppers, going into whatever we want to distribute the items into. Um, so that's about it. Um, the other thing to remember, and I did mention this in my other video, because the block update order is impactful, it does matter which way you face it. It will behave in different, differently depending on the facing. So for the potion one, uh, between the, the east and the south orientation works exactly the same, no problem there. But when we went to the west orientation, we just had to adjust the redstone clock a little bit. Sorry, the fader clock, I mean. Um, and this was simply to account for the fact that we were impacting the block update order. We just had to move redstone about. So when this sort of happens, you know, just play around with um, whether you have a target block or a regular star fader clock and the position of it, as well as the position of the other comparators and redstone dust in the system. All of this can have effect on it. It is unfortunately one of the restrictions of dropper based item distribution. Because we are manipulating the block update order, um, that means we are dependent on north, south, east, west orientation. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful to people. Um, or at least you know one person. That's all it really needs to be helpful for, isn't it? Cheers.